today's problem is given a number n say n is 12 you have to simply find the divisors of 12 so divisors of 12 are 1 2 3 4 6 and 12 you don't have to print the actual divisor you can simply return the count of divisors so if n is 12 output should be 6 if n is 10 if divisors are 1 2 5 and 10 so output should be 4 if n is say 16 if divisors are 1 2 4 8 and 16 so the output should be 5 so given a number n you have to simply count the number of divisors and return it in other words you have to complete this function which takes a number n it will return the count of divisors of n. So, how will you solve this problem? You will simply run a loop from 1 to n and you will check that if i is a divisor of n, how do you do that? The remainder should be 0. So, n mod i, if it is 0, you will do a count plus plus. Initially, you will take count equal to 0 and after that at the end you can simply return count. So this is a simple approach to solve the problem at hand. If I ask you the complexity here, it is looping for n times. So, first solution complexity becomes big of n. What about space complexity? No extra space, we go of 1. Now, how do we optimize it? One way is we can loop from 1 to n by 2 because we know that for any n beyond n by 2, the only divisor is n itself. For 10 beyond 5, the only divisor is n itself. If we do this, we can initialize the count by 1 because n is always a divisor and we can do the same thing. Obviously, this is better than the brute force, but in terms of big O, it comes out to be the same. For the previous solution, our loop iterates for n times. In this solution, the loop iterates for n by 2 times. So, I hope you know about big O. So, in terms of big O, we will ignore the constant and this comes out to be same as big O of n. So, this helped a little but not to the best possible extent. Let me help you with a hint towards the optimized solution. So, if n is 12 we can, and 1 is a divisor, we can write 12 is 1 into 12. 2 is a divisor, we can write 12 is 2 into 6, 3 into 4, followed by followed by after 3 the next divisor is 4 so 4 into 3 after that the next divisor is 6 so 6 into 2 and the next divisor is 12 so 12 into 1 so we have listed down all the divisors and we have also listed down all the quotients so 1 into 12 is 12 2 into 6 is 12 and so on. Now if you observe this carefully, we need not go beyond this to say that 4 is a divisor or 6 is a divisor or 12 is a divisor. We are able to find all the divisors till here itself. Similarly, I would ask you to draw the same breakdown for say n equal to 100 and figure out till which limit should we go. So, try to do this exercise. So, after that you must have observed that when you multiply 10 with 10 you get 100 and beyond that all the divisors are repeated the way we have for 12. So, from this you can observe that we should not go beyond 
10 we should not go beyond 3 10 here or 3 here is nothing but is nothing but square root of n so if i reaches square root of n we should not go beyond that another way to understand this limit can be if this is n and I am calling this as i what is this what is this with respect to n and i is nothing but n by i before this limit the relation between them is i should be less than n by i same thing here i should be less than equal to n by i so if i is less than equal to n by i we already know n is the input so we have to figure out the limit of i so the unknown in this equation is i if you solve for that you will find i square less than equal to n if you simplify it you will get i less than equal to root n so in our solution we should not go from 1 to n by 2 or 1 to n we should go from 1 to root n so try to modify this code see if you can convert this logic into code so how do you do that you will take count equal to 0 we will iterate from 1 to root n and then we should increment i within that if n mod i is 0 if i is a divisor of n n by i is also divisor of n so we should increment the count by 2 but in case of 100 both i and n by i are same so we should, we should not increment the count by 2 we should increment the count by 1 so within this condition we can check that if i n n by i are same we should do a count plus plus otherwise we should do a count equal to count plus 2 and after the loop after the loop we can say return count we already initialized count to 0 now if we do this it will help us find the number of devices in a better way in a faster way how do you make sure you iterate till root n you should somehow find the value of root n so either you can write square root of n you can use the inbuilt function or from this we can observe that i square should be less than equal to n we can also write it as i into i less than equal to n it is the same thing now if i ask you the complete of this solution we are looking only for root n times so this gives us a better complete than the brute force our new complete is big of root n and what about space complexity? we are not using any extra space so space complexity is big of 1 so we were able to optimize this problem with the simple observation that if i is a divisor the portion which is n by i is also a divisor so in this problem we are not using any data structures we are not using any algorithms we are using basic mathematical concepts thank you for watching this video make sure you check out our website for the list of upcoming courses thank you